Hey everyone, it's Venom. I am back with a new video here. Basically just going to be going over how I adjusted my throws to the new Quest 2. Um, figured it'd be some good information to get to you guys. It's a little bit different as far as the release point and the way that it throws. So I'm going to be going in, showing you the circuit that I was running. And I feel like it helped me quite a bit as far as adjusting my throws. So it might help you guys. So I figured I'd put this together. With that... <laughs> I will be missing some shots in this video. I have not perfected my throw yet on this on this headset. I think they've got some some things they got to work on to uh, adjust it to where it's going to be actually functional for for competitive play. But I do feel like this headset has some promise and could be very comparable to the tracking on the CV1. So I'm going to go ahead and get us into a private arena and we will get started. Okay, so we've got a private arena here. Let's just go grab the disc. And so yeah, today we're going to be talking about shooting on the Quest 2. And for the most part, what I'm going to be going over is uh, its release point, essentially. So uh, on top of that, we're only going to be focusing also on this half, this quarter, I guess, of the arena. Nothing too much further back, because we're really just trying to dial in on, on getting the timing down correctly for, for your shot. What we're going to be starting with is this wall here. What I like to do, if you, if you step back, you can see it's kind of hard to see the detail on the wall without uh, much light on the Quest 2. So we're going to bring in the disc and just line it up right up here. Let it act as a lamp for us. And so now we can, we can see more of the, the hexagon shapes on this wall. So, before I actually get started and, and begin throwing, what I want to talk about is basically the way the release point works on, on the headset. So I'm coming from a CV1, and I want you to picture my hands here as the, the, uh, the grab button. So with the CV1, as you squeezed in the, uh, the grab button, it, it was pretty early on in the squeeze that you would notice that it would actually initiate the grab. So about right in here, you would go ahead and grab the disc, you'd hold it all the way through, and you can maintain holding the disc until you wanted to release it. And at that point, once you get to, I mean, it was almost instantaneous. When you started releasing it, you could actually tell that it was releasing the disc early on. With the Quest 2, however, and I don't know if this is something that Oculus has done or if Rad just needs to get in there and fix it, um, but I, in my opinion, this is the single biggest issue with the with playing on the Quest 2 right now. And that's that rather than releasing the disc right in this, this early zone here, it's taking an extra 15, 20% of that button being released before it actually lets go of the disc. And so what ends up happening is in, with your throws, so you're, you're, you know, you're taking your shot and you're using your flick, uh, you know, some wrist flick like with a CV1 you could do. Well, you know, as, as you release right here or even in part of your flick, as you release, it was, you know, letting go. But when you release and it's still kind of holding onto the disc and as your flick continues to go through before it fully releases that's what's causing the disc to shoot straight down so what we're going to be doing at least currently until they offer some sort of fix is to work on that release point try to figure out the timing on it and at least put a temporary band-aid on something that will probably end up having to be adjusted to, uh, away from once they make some changes so for now this is what we're going to be doing so again we're going to be very close to the wall lined up with this middle hexagon here and what we're going to do is just pull out your personal disc and we're going to work on trying to line up that release point just make sure that we're hitting right in the center there letting go early enough because if you let go too late like that then it starts shooting down more towards the ground so the other thing i've noticed with the quest 2 is try not to uh flick your wrist too much try to keep it locked and rather than kind of curving around your your arm getting an arc like a, your normal baseball throw make more of a push motion like, like like that so the reason why you know as you start moving in this arc here you've got to find there's a much smaller window to release the disc at when it's going to go on target if you look go too early it's going to go high let go too late in the arc it's going to go low so by lining up and making more of a push motion you've got a, a bigger 
range of, of timing where you can actually release the disc and it won't be too harmful to the trajectory of your shot. So for you guys, I'm going to recommend just line this up. Do 10. I'm only going to do 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once we're done, we're going to move the, move the lamp back up. And we're going to back up just a little bit further here. So get about here. And so now what we're going to be aiming for, still in the middle of that small little dot there. I don't know if you can see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> Maybe I can point it out in the video. But um, there's three hexagons just right in the center there. We're gonna, If the disc lands in any one of those spots, you're good. Because again, we're just trying to zone in. We don't have to make it perfect quite yet. And since we're going to be counting this as like a circuit, um, we'll run through it. And then after that, you'll do it again. And you'll usually notice that the second time through was a lot better than your first. So it's just getting used to that timing. So again, we're just gonna go one, two, three, four. Oh, a little wide. Five, okay, perfect. So again, let me go move this back. And we're gonna drop back a little bit further. And right here, aiming for the hexagon is gonna be a little bit tough. So what we're gonna be aiming for is just that top triangle. If you can get it in there, we'll count it as good. So again, I'm only gonna do five just cause I'm trying to keep this video brief. But you guys, I would recommend doing 10. So. Out of the right. One. Two. See, I let go a little too, a little too late. Three. Four. And five. That's a pretty good one there. Perfect. So. We've got the stationary shots down. Hopefully you've kind of found that release point. And one thing that I've noticed, if, if you <laughs> if you lose that release point, it's, it's kind of hard to tell when you're throwing the disc, but I found that you can really figure it out by hopping around and uh, slapping off the geo because you can just feel it. If you just push off, you can kind of tell that there's a point where you're still holding on to it. Uh, and like I said, that's like your where it's still just not quite fully released yet. So by working on your slaps, you'll notice that, I mean, almost the moment you touch it, you have to let go for you to actually go in the trajectory that you want to. So it's practice of just slapping off the geo until you figure out that, that timing. And once you get it, what you'll do is just go back and work through these exercises again. So we've moved from our stationary shots. What we're gonna do now is focus on our straight linear shots moving directly towards the goal. So here what we're going to be starting on is just like the Pac-Man or wall and we're going to push towards the goal and uh, take the shot. So it's one. Again, you guys are looking to, uh, to do ten. Oh, so pulled it. A little too early. Trying to find that perfect little medium there. And the other thing is, that's two. If, if you're really struggling, because you're throwing too hard, just slow it down just a little bit. A lot of times that can help you just really dial in on where that where the timing is for that release. Ah, yikes. Here we go. Slow it down a little bit. I think that's four. I don't know. We'll call it four. And five. So, do it from the right side. Shift over to the left. I'm only going to do two just to, again, keep it brief. Oh, low. One. And so lastly on this, we're going to be looking at uh, some fade shots. So, you know, very rarely in a game are you ever going to actually be able to 
just turn and, and take a direct linear shot on the goal. So what we're going to be looking for more now is just uh, practicing your shot going kind of against uh, or going into more of a fade. So for these in particular, we're going to be looking for an overhand shot. Generally, when you're doing more fade shots, I start looking more for that sidearm, which is also something I can't remember if I talked about it at the beginning of this video or not, but do the circuit overhand and then run through and do it with a sidearm shot. Uh, I haven't done much with the uh, the underhand shooting yet, but for the most part, I think the, the primary or mostly most used shots are going to be your overhand and sidearm. So uh, for this one, I'm just going to do a couple here, overhand shots, and then we'll call it call it a day on the on the circuit. So moving, pulled it, wall, going the other direction, slightly off. One. And two. Okay. So that does conclude the circuit. I would recommend jumping on and running this two or three times just before you get on and do some pubs. Uh, I think it'll really help to kind of zone in on that, that release point before, uh, you know, you get in there and start playing. So that should be helpful. So before I go, I do want to give a quick shout out, out to, uh, to VRWare who have done a great job putting together this uh, the apparel line for me. We are releasing an ember and ice for this fall, as well as these new joggers, which have been awesome, very warm. I will say that any of my stuff that you pick up from VRWare does help support me a lot. It uh, allows me to basically look into new equipment, as it all goes right back into the channel. Um, you should see my current setup right now with this, uh, this webcam, which is actually my phone that I've got stacked into uh, what is it, two laundry baskets just so that way I could get this recorded. Um, so it's, it's a work in progress, but uh, it's, it's been fun to put together. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. If you feel like this video helped you out, please don't forget to subscribe. I'll let you know when uh, any new videos come out in the future, and I will see you guys in the arena. Later.